Jamie, I'm going to go right to you because you had put out a tweet regarding how ridiculous July is going to be for Xbox Game Pass. Now, I know I've seen the first, uh, and I sent it. Let me just pull up uh, the DM that I sent you guys. Um, let's see. Hold on just a second here. Okay, so the uh, Xbox Game Pass official Twitter account just posted this uh, earlier this morning, 9 one a.m., uh, where it does have the first eight titles that are being added, Jamie, to Xbox Game Pass. But it's the backhand four that are not on this list that you should have you very excited. So it's Cricket 2024. Again, not a game for me, but it's in there, okay? They have a game called Flock, which actually looks... It, it's, it's an indie. It looks very cool. I'm not going to lie. Journey to a Savage Planet, that is a return. I believe that was already in Xbox Game Pass. You have one called Magical Delicacy. Um, that's a side-scroller. It's a, it's a pixel-based witch game, if I'm not mistaken. I watched the trailer this morning. Again, not really a game I'm going to spend 17 hours playing, but it looked cool nonetheless. White, uh, A neon white actually looks really good. Uh, I'm very excited for that. I know people were like poo pooing that. That actually looks cool. Um, there was a game back in the days, I believe it was a PlayStation launch game called Jumping Flash. Now, it's not the same game, obviously, but it kind of gave me that feel uh, to, when I was watching the trailer for Neon White. Now, this may not mean a lot for a lot of people, but uh, Nickelodeon All Star Brawl 2. That's a big that's a big grab for kids. Uh, again, ne my nephew Tyler, he plays all of these games because he loves Smash Brothers, but he plays All-Star Brawl 2. I actually bought it for him. Well, now it's in Game Pass. Now, there is one wasn't, that I don't know. Was wasn't Neon, Neon White, I think, was even up for like Indie Game of the Year, I believe. Uh, oh, yeah. Google, right? yeah. Yeah, it was. And it's I don't like know why 89. people are doing this. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's yeah, yeah, they absolutely shouldn't be. You watch the trailer, and if you don't like it, I, I mean, I hear you. But that's that's a big get for Game Pass. Yeah, uh, so, so there's one called the Case of the Golden Idol. I don't know what it is. I didn't even watch the trailer. Look, the, I'll put it to this way: the the artwork isn't isn't a isn't appealing enough to be like, wow, what is this game? It look it looks it doesn't. I don't want to judge it based a book on its cover. So I'm going to give it a shot. Maybe it's the greatest game since sliced bread. But the one, the least one that I'm most uh, that I'm most interested in, and they have one here now. I don't know how to pronounce it. I believe the T is silent. It's T C H I A. So it's Chaya. I always I go ch 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 Chia whenever I. I mean that, that could be that actually also looks pretty good. Now, Jamie, you know you had put a tweet in. Uh, you well, actually you had posted a tweet, and the tweet that you had posted. Let me see if I can find it here is uh, you had to, uh, I think you retweeted the Xbox UK one where on the second half of July, ladies and gentlemen, you're getting Flintlock, The Siege of Dawn, Dungeons of Hindenburg, and of course, the demo that's out right now, uh, Kanitsu Gami, Path of the Goddess. And holy shit, does that game look a uh, freaking amazing. I haven't played it. Because obviously I was doing the show, but that's the thing. That's what I'm gonna do this afternoon. Jamie, look, I know that there are still a bunch of people in this community on both sides, both Xbox, which is shocking to me, but on PlayStation especially, that try and poo-poo the importance of Game Pass and its value. Maybe not every game is going to be for you as a gamer, but we cannot deny that the, the oh, Game Pass is filled with fodder shenanigans is a conversation that even exists anymore, and July is another banger of a year. Now, there are some rumors floating that there's going to be additional titles added to the back end. I don't know if that's true, but if we just get this... Without the so-called rumor, it's a W, a giant W. Let's get into it, man. I mean, as you know, I put out a, a video every month of upcoming games coming out that month. I put one out the other day, 10 biggest new games coming out to Xbox in July. 
And I have a database of games coming to Xbox, you know, dates, times, you know, uh, Xbox One, Xbox Series, consoles, all that stuff, Game Pass, every bit of information. By the way, my lists are actually more accurate than IGN's. I'd like to proud myself. That's that. not surprising because what does IGN do right except for back, back Sony? <laughs> yeah, true. You know, uh, IGN might not even have Xbox listed as the game coming uh, for it. Yeah. I mean, you know, you do spell ignorant with IGN. I'm, I'm, ju I'm just saying, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. I'm being real. Yeah. yeah, a bit of a tangent. I can't believe that Persona 3 Reload was announced on the Xbox stage last year, yet they forgot to list it on their website. Well, I don't think they forgot. I just think that they're very pur purposeful is how they do their business, which is why they, I don't like IGN. <laughs> they did it to like four or something games that year. Yeah, it's gross. It's it's just gross. Yeah. But uh, you know, you know, back to the topic, uh, I cover like games coming out and people like to dog on Game Pass for whatever reason, maybe because they don't have access to it, maybe because they're part of the contingent of people that just don't like subscription models. Let me tell you that the biggest games that come to get Xbox like almost every single month, uh, usually launch in Game Pass. You know, of course, your Assassin's Creed and games like that usually don't launch in Game Pass, but like big games launch in Game Pass. In July, I'll put out there, July is the biggest month for gaming this year. It's kind of low key because not much marketing is going on, but it's the biggest month for games. You know, the first Descendant just dropped uh, this morning. Uh, which is an Unreal Engine 5 third-person shooter. It's free to play. People can download it, play it if they like it. Uh, but, you know, uh, Kinetsu Path of the Goddess, it's a half-action game, half-strategy game, and it looks phenomenal. The demo is out now, launches in Game Pass later this month. Flintlock Siege of Dawn, that's going to be the biggest game of the month. That is a super deep action RPG, which I think people are going to love. You know, there's armor crafting, there's, you can fly around the environment in this like hover style way. You have a magical fox, which helps you out in battle. <laughs> like, it, which it looks dope. It looks yeah, so it look, good, dude. It, it looks super cool. And, you know, whenever I make these posts or videos, I have these pe people, these detractors that say like, oh, well, at least I buy my games, right? One, the developers get paid up front <laughs> for these deals, right? So the developer isn't missing out on anything. And the people that always say, Hey, I buy my games. Do you know what I never see on Twitter? I never see them post videos or screenshots of their gameplay. So they're not buying mm. the games they're saying they are. They just like to argue. Game Pass is a great deal. And like, I put it like this. People can say I'm just defending Game Pass because I'm an Xbox fanboy or whatever. I never used to be subscribed to Game Pass. Like up until maybe uh, 2019 or 2020, I never really saw the value in it for me because I owned nearly every single game in there. Exactly. And that's back when they had literally a hundred games in, you know, the mm. Arkham Knight and Alien Isolation and their first party stuff. I had all that stuff. But then when they start really kicking things off in late 2019 and 2020, like they have like over 300 games now. To me, Game Pass is a must subscribe service. You know, it's up there with Disney Plus for me. I'm subscribed to Disney Plus. I can't see myself moving away from that. And for some reason, Game Pass triggers people. And I don't understand why, you know, the business model for all these mediums have changed over the years. Uh, iTunes literally changed the music business in the early 2000s. People were okay with it. The book model has completely changed. People download books and read them. You know, uh, Netflix and all these TV subscribers. People used to complain about being subscribed to Sky or whatever cable services you have in the US. Like People would complain about having to pay for these services. And then when they cut the cord, you know, they start subscribing to 10 different services, you know, and these people yeah. that subscribe to 10 different services hate Game Pass. And I, I just don't understand it because it's a good value. If it wasn't a good value, I'd, cr I'd crap on it. Like Microsoft, they're not perfect. I, I hate the fact that their DVR system isn't that good. Oh, uh, you know, so it's egregious. Yeah, yeah there's no like, doubt about it. Yeah. Like we used to have two minutes of 1080p 60 FPS recording when the Xbox Series now X it's came a minute. out. And now it's a minute. And it, it dropped to a minute and we weren't even told why. It just randomly happened in, I think it was like late 2021. Um, you know, that isn't good. I think their BC stuff needs to stick around for a little bit further. Be sorry, a little bit longer because the Xbox 360 turns 20 years old next year. They should have at least made it to next year. The fact mm -hmm. that people can't buy 360 games on the web store because the store is broken. So they're not going to fix the online store before the store closes. Like Microsoft ain't perfect. But when it comes to Game Pass and their games, bloody good at the minute. You know, there was a time when Microsoft had like a little piddly handful of studios when they only had like 
people hate Microsoft now because they they have all these studios. Think about it like this: back in the Xbox 360 generation, they had like five studios. They yeah. only put out one one game every few years, and they were the biggest name in gaming. Where gaming was referred to as the de facto thing as Xbox. You know, if you're playing a video game on something, it was an Xbox. And they rarely put out games. You know, they relied on third-party business models, the Call of Duty marketing, and that got them to the top. Um, but now they're in a great place. They have a great service. And the fact that people keep crapping on their service, it's either jealousy or they're mental. I mean, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's narratives, right? Like, look, I don't get paid every time I say Xbox Game Pass. Because if I did... Me and Mrs. Boone would have bought a house already. Uh, I say it quite a bit. And I don't say it because I'm an Xbox. I say it because I'm a consumer. And I'm a consumer that is one of the few people that puts himself and my life on front street for everyone to watch. Whether I'm judged or not, it's out there. I'm retired. Yes. Uh, am I lucky that I retired very early? Sure. But luck had nothing to do with it. It's It, it had to do with tenacity and, and, and up, upbringing from my pops and my mom's watching their work ethic. And I put the work in and I worked super hard to get it. Right. So I don't apologize for it. What I do say is that as great as my pension is, uh, Infinite Umbra, it has a ceiling like everything in this world. And I'm sorry to, 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 to you know, to, to continue to talk about it. But to Jamie's point, I, I, do, I, do, I don't get it. I do, if you don't like Xbox, I hear you. But can you be a human? Can you actually be a you real life human being whether you hate the box or you don't be like yeah man you know that is pretty ridiculous how incredible and what you get in xbox game pass i wish my platform did that whether that be nintendo or uh or playstation and another perfect example of continuing to deliver incredible experiences of every ilk infinite umbra July is another banger month. I mean, you have triple A bombs, you got double A bombs, you got single A, and you got Indian. You know what? Who wins? We win as consumers because your choices are there in spades. And that doesn't, and it's and it doesn't mean that they get these nine new titles and they take nine away. Yes, some do leave, but they they advertise this thing at a hundred games. And we know that there's like 500 games in there currently. Let's talk about July, man. Big month for the service, especially with some of the big games. Uh, you know, again, uh, the, the the Capcom game, shocking. That is again multi-plat, but day one in Game Pass. That's a big. That's a big get, man. Game Pass, Game Pass. I got it on my PC and my Xbox. <laughs> Listen, last year alone, I was talking about this uh, maybe a year or two ago where I was pointing out how much. And when I really looked at it and started to think, man, how much am I saving using Game Pass? Mm -hmm. I really had to think on it. I'm like, at that point, it was like 700 and some odd dollars. I had did the math on it. Right. And but we, I went to just to see in general how much last year, for instance, um, you, we uh, users who would play all the games that they offered you in Game Pass would have saved. Do you know that it came out in American, at least to American currency, it came out to eight thousand seven hundred and sixty-three dollars dollars in different regions. I mean, in the uh, UK, a seven hundred and seven thousand six hundred ninety-five. Uh, I'm gonna guess that's pounds. In in uh, Canada, Canadian uh, moose dollars, it was. 11,425 in uh, Australia, the 13,392 Australian dollar reduce. Like, it's pretty insane, man. And uh, Brazil, I forget what I think they call their currency is what real, I forgot what they call it 36,898. It's pretty insane how much value you get out of, of Game Pass. And so, not only is it undeniable when it comes to that. But you're right. You look at some of the you look at many of the games that they're offering you outside of the games that were nominated for game of the year, like Neon White that you mentioned a minute ago. Yeah. To to Chia, which was uh, one of the PlayStation games they highlighted that they had as an independent game. And uh, Chia does look gorgeous. It reminded me of um, Zelda. I think the Wind Waker or whatever, like when you that, that's exactly it. what it reminds. I watched the video and when she's flying with the leaf 
Mm -hmm. Uh, and she's like you know she's like she she cooks and and the character it it, she has like a limited time to how long she climbs yeah it's very very breath of the wild Mm -hmm. definitely had those elements i'm definitely i'm definitely going to play it i can see it looking gorgeous on the old rog ally too Mm -hmm. so i'm going to enjoy it i mean and i love everything that's the beauty too if you don't limit yourself and you try to play everything or at least a lot like a Hargeet would. Hargeet plays more, even more genres than I would. Yeah. But I am, you know, I try. And he destroys them. He <laughs> like <does>. you. <laughs> he really does. And if you if you really get that, I mean, you it's, there's no possible logical way you could have any negativity about Game Pass. When I see our Who brothers complaining about it, I know what that's from. That's just jealousy. That's yeah. exactly what it is, sir. Yes. Yeah. If PlayStation had it, they'd be praising it to the high heavens. So let's just be real for once and and that's the thing like social media has has unfortunately tailored people to lie to yeah, either well, lie or all, hashtag all they lie. do is lie all they do is lie <laughs> and, and and gather in barns and eat hay and neigh at us but yeah um it's 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 sad, man. And like me, I'm I pride myself on being real. I don't yeah. like fakes. I don't like being fake. I don't sit around and just lie to people just to lie because I prefer one platform over the over the other. I'm very clear that I prefer Xbox over everything else, but I'm not anti anybody else, you know what I mean? And I don't know why anybody would be anti whatever. Why you you here as a gamer, right? That should be your first and foremost thing to do. So if you're seeing all these outpouring of great games coming to the service of Xbox and Game Pass, or rather, and, and on Xbox, uh, I don't see how you could be like poo-pooing that, and you know what I mean, and 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 railing against it. It just doesn't add up. Uh, so yeah, like you, the Flintlock. I played the demo of that. Maybe I guess that game looks so good, something. dude. Like it looks pretty good. It's it's man. scattered shortcomings too, but it's a double A. So I don't I don't expect it to have triple A. Uh, budgeted visuals but for double a it still looks damn good Mm -hmm. i mean and what would you expect with it being an unreal engine right (laughs) yeah your middle name oh and real quick uh just just confirmation in the killer's fortress the mid boss for double dragon is a bobo so he's in the game oh nice he is in there (laughs) i said adobo but i meant to say a bobo yeah a bobo yeah, adobo is the spice that Mrs. Boom uses yeah. because, well, you know, <laughs> she's Hispanic, so <laughs> yeah, Bobo is spicy. So a guy gets it, it matches. He's spicy. Yeah. No, but seriously, um, yeah, I forgot about. Okay, yeah, Bobo. That's it, Bobo. But um, do they have the the? Never, never mind. That'd be too much for prime time. I was gonna say morning time is probably better for prime time with the 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 whip wielding um lady of the night i'll say anyway uh (laughs) but no man it's dope flintlock i played about four hours of that in a demo really enjoyable it has some flaws you know but some yeah i think that they work out before it releases so i think that's going to be good too dungeons of hinterberg i'm you know seeing more of it as we saw in this showcase that game looks good dude it looks like it'll be kind of fun yeah a little diversion i don't know how how much i'll get into it but I'm going to give it a chance. It looks, I, I like the color palette and everything of it. It looks like it could be something special. Uh, can, uh, excuse me, Kunitsu Gami. Uh, I'm going to try that out today, later today, probably once I uh, get a nap in. And, you know, since the demo is out, uh, it looks like it's going to be really great too. And that was a surprise for everybody when they showcased that. So, uh, you know, I'm sure again, a, a lot of people on PlayStation, they have the demo coming to them as well. I'm sure they would have loved for this to launch into the service of PSN, right? Or to, uh, excuse me, PS Plus, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I'm loving all of that. And then I'm, I'm sure we'll probably have even more reveals coming later this month, as they tend to do. They'll say, oh, this is also coming. So, again, I don't know how you could sit there and and be rail against anything Game Pass. I, th- I think it's just silly at this point if you're hating on it, unless on the service at this point. It's uh, it's something all of us should be praising. I, hell, I would want Sony to to do something, uh, make their own version of it. If anything, if I was a PlayStation gamer, I would say, "Hey, can you give us something comparable?" That would be my complaint. Like they're giving us this, they're giving them that on that side. What about us? 
You know, they won't okay. never complain, um, bro. I talked about it yesterday morning. Nobody complains anything about Sony. Nothing. Sony is the well, when the, you do, and you and, and it's not even if you have an opinion. Crazy Lou Gaming people attack you. It's like that the attack dogs are on the ready. You know yes, what? PlayStation always. be better. Sorry, it's just exactly. you suck right now. <laughs> right. That's just that's just a fact. Right. And you mentioned uh, the first descendant. I actually played a bit of that before I got on. By the way, uh, gorgeous. Just want to throw it out there. So uh, also Unreal Engine. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, I have to say it. I'm on the contract. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> uh, welcome, Louis. By the way, did your picture haunt you yet and capture your soul? Uh, nah. You know they did they did a research on the picture though. Supposedly she is Magdalene the Red. She supposedly killed three husbands. So I don't know. Oh boy. I gotta do well, there's that. That's yeah. a terrible yeah. woman for you. Yeah. Well, good for the yeah. wife though. She, she hopefully, gets hopefully you, you you hang around long enough to finish this podcast, sir. Uh, we appreciate your opinion. Uh, whether you get possessed or not is irrelevant. Uh, uh, yeah. So Umbra, listen. Good stuff all around. Uh, I mean, listen. Uh, it's just it's it's it's. Game Pass is in a position now that they just keep stacking the deck. There is no denying it. Crazy Little Gaming, I, I want to get your hot take on this. I know you're, you're, you're just joining us. First of all, welcome, as always. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, July expected to be a banger of a month. One, according to uh, Jamie's uh, your research, actually one of the biggest gaming Julys in, in recent memory, and a lot of those games are in Game Pass day and date. Uh, another win for Xbox, another win for Xbox consumers. Let's get your hot take on the games launching into Xbox Game Pass this July. I suppose the question is, what hasn't it not been a banger? Even though sometimes we see, like, oh, it's okay, these games, you know, that are coming up or kind of stuff, but it's good. It's good. It's a good month for to, to play your backlog games because, you. I mean, everybody's got a backlog. Everybody does. I mean, I've not seen anybody come back and say, no, I don't have a backlog. We all do. We got games to beat. So Game Pass, man, is the best service out there, like Jamie said, is the truth. I mean, no matter what, what people say, you know, the thing is, it's just too beautiful. We just see every month they pour in games and games and games. And that's what we got to do on these consoles. Instead of going out here playing Twitter, that's what we got to do. We got to sit here and play games. And that's what Xbox just keeps us making us do, which is the beautiful thing about Game Pass. Each and every month. Games and more games. I mean, look, the library for July is beautiful. And what's coming up forward, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's going to be a banger. I mean, you got Call of Duty coming soon. But you got GamesCon that, that when, it, when it comes around in August to see what other games are going to come around, which is about. We got Indiana Jones. We got also in September, we have um Stalker 2 that's also coming out on Game Pass. I mean, yeah. damn. We're packed in games. Now, on the other side of things, what are they doing over there? All they got is Astrobot, which I'm not saying it's bad. It's going to be a good game. But besides Astrobot, they got Concord, which they've all were wishing and praying and saying everywhere is going to be the Starfield killer, which, again, it's a big mistake for you to add killer or the game. or You know you know what I mean, right? The same thing with Killzone. They say it's going to be the Halo killer, and you know what happened to it, right? Anthem. Said it was going to be Destiny Killer. You know what happened to it, right? So it's always bad when you add the killer to it. So, and another thing, like I said, they were praising for it to be a Starfield killer, but it was not the game they expected. That's all they have pretty much on the other side. Plus, another thing, too, and it's something I talked about yesterday, and I'll say it again and again because it's the truth. I mean, look, Plus Service got a price increase. Did I see people go out there and complain? No, they didn't complain. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, just to help out the service to get it better. Okay, that's it. But the question is, I did not see, not even media, nobody asked, okay, you guys made a price increase. What are you offering us to pay your $180 each and every uh, for, for the whole year? What are you offering us to pay this? They haven't offered nothing. They have not said anything. I mean, you got places and stars that's been down for like, what, 25 days now? That's yeah, almost a month. Uh, almost uh, a month. Yeah, oh, yeah, almost a month. Rid ridiculous. No, no, no complaints are by anybody. Just, you know, oh, it's fine. It's, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's Sony. They could do what they want. They Get can out do of what, here with that. Exactly. It's like Sony does whatever they want with them, and they don't say nothing. And that is something I keep on saying that media has got to take charge. And look, we talked about this last week. We talked about last week, especially with the PSVR 2. And all of a sudden, we see an article come up on media three or four days later. And I was like, damn, finally an article comes out saying, you, you guys should be refunding these people. 
I mean, you guys got to sit down and refund these people for, for the people who actually purchased the damn PSVR 2 because you guys cut production. Now you're cutting budgets. So what's going on with this? I mean, what's happening? Are you going to give us a refund option or what are you guys going to do? I mean, I was so happy when I saw an article go out, out there by the media talking about this. And like I said, nobody goes out and complains about anything that Sony does. I mean, I even mentioned they charge you 10 bucks to upgrade the game while Xbox does it for free. Yeah. For free. Ridiculous. I mean, you guys got to complain. You guys got to complain. You guys got to come out and complain to make Sony better. The thing is that every time we say something, they feel like, yeah, we're putting our gloves on. We're attacking. No, we're not attacking. We're just saying we want it to be better because look at this generation. Xbox has done a wonderful generation. I mean, they've done so well. They went out there for the studios. They made a, a big full, uh, first party lineup. I mean, look at this showcase. What happened? Beautiful. One of the most beautiful showcases I've seen in years. Combining places and Xbox, the most beautiful showcase I've seen in years out of those two shows. I mean, those two companies. Xbox pulled it off, made an awesome showcase. Why? Because they actually have a, a big first party lineup. Not only that, they also got third party coming in and a whole lot of stuff coming in. So, yes. We are, we are seeing how Xbox is doing, and that's because of how PlayStation was last generation. So what am I saying when I go out there and say stuff about Sony? I want them to go out there, put the gloves, right, and say, okay, Xbox, let's go into it. Let's see what we can bring so you guys can bring better. And that's how it is. Competition is always good. But sadly, Sony is right now playing catch-up, which is the truth. They're trying to catch up with what Xbox is doing everything. So what can we do? I have to sit and wait to see what Sony brings to the table. But as of now, Xbox is kicking butt. Xbox, uh, Xbox Game Pass is the best service to be subscribed on. Why? Because we we got to do what we value, have to do brother. Value on proposition this system, yeah. and that is to game and also save money. Value is also great. Now, I'm telling you, Xbox Game Pass is the best service to try. If you guys have not tried out, and stop with the whole stupid idea, because listen. I just love when they come on and say, well, they are renting games. They're not buying it. Huh? What do you mean renting games? What are you talking <laughs> so about? What, 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 what is that narrative about? Because I keep telling them, I keep telling them this. Every time Game Pass comes up and they show this library of game, this library of titles, right? There's probably one or two you say, ah, these titles look weird. Then you look for them on YouTube. You see, oh, let me see. Hmm. Okay. This looks okay. Let me go try it out. That's what Game Pass lets you to do. You try it out. If you like it, you keep on playing it. And if you love it, you go ahead and buy it and have it for your catalog because you have the option to buy. That's the benefit of Game Pass. If you guys don't understand that, I mean, you are nuts. Like I said, stop with the foolish idea about renting because, listen, Plus, believe it or not, when you play Plus and you download the game, you say, yeah, it's my game. Uh-huh. Did you buy it? No. So no. what happens if you stop paying for the subscription on Plus? You, you lose access to it, brother. Exactly. Facts. You get yes. that lock in there. You can't play it until you reactivate the Plus in order to play it. So, yes, it's rented too. But now for Game Pass, so same thing. If you quit playing it, you can't use the service. But if you buy it, though, it's yours. You can play it. So, like I said, stop with the renting crap because you guys pretty much have the same thing over there with the Plus. You download it, you quit paying for the service, you cannot play the game anymore. It's locked. Unless if you buy it. That's how it is. It's not yours.